the first thing I want you to observe is how Jesus saw the unsaved. You know, there is how, uh, especially in this our world, there is how you can ascribe glory <laughs> unto the unsaved man that God has not ascribed to him. How did Jesus see the unsaved? How did he view them? What is his perspective of them? What is his view of them? Because since evangelism, what we call missions, is very core to what God is doing on the earth, it is very important to define how the unsaved should be seen. Now, before you get to verse 35, so Jesus has said something in Matthew chapter 9 from verses number 10 through 12. In Matthew 9 verses 10 through 12. The Bible says, and it came to pass, as Jesus sat at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto his disciples, why does your master eat with publicans and sinners? And Jesus said, at that he said to them, they that be old need not a physician, but they that are sick. So who the Jesus refers to, refer to as those who are sick, publicans and sinners. So in Jesus' eye, the unsaved man is a sick person who needs a physician. Now, now the point is that sometimes a sick person doesn't know he's sick. But, you know, you, you just, sometimes you, 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 people go to the hospital and say, I'm fine, no, nothing is wrong with me. Then what do they do? Let's go and do tests, right? Then they take your blood sample or they, they take your urine or that. Then they take you to the lab. Then they bring you proof that you are not well. That is the work of the preacher of the gospel. He has to first diagnose the sick, convince the sick, then heal the sick. I'm talking about spiritual death now, not even physical sickness. If you go and outreach is well, you know that there are people you are talking, trying to talk about salvation that are telling you they don't need it. So Jesus says, you keep saying, I'm not going today. There are yet four months. I don't feel like preaching today. He says, ah, see, lift up your eyes and see. The, the fields are already white for the harvest. So the assurance that Jesus gives us in his word is that there is no harvest problem. The harvest is plenteous and the harvest is ripe. No harvest problem. There is no harvest problem. The problem is not eh, there are nobody to reach. The problem is not nobody is listening to me. Huh? It says the harvest is both plenteous and the harvest is ripe. So what is the problem? Where we read Jesus said, the harvest is plenty also. We only have a problem. The laborers are few. So it's now pray the Lord of the harvest so that he will send laborers into his harvest. So no harvest problem, but we can have a laborer's problem. That means the reaping of the harvest is not for lazy people. That is why Jesus said they have to be laborers. The word laborer means someone who is a toiler. He toils very hard. He works very hard. That's a laborer. So, the ripe harvest will never be reaped unless we are ready to engage in the labors that are involved in the reaping of the harvest. Jesus told them, the harvest will really be plenteous. The laborers, the laborers are few. Matthew 9, 37, 38. They were expecting external people to be sent. Ah, they were the first set of people. So, the first set of people that Jesus uses to reap in his harvest are his own disciples, his own sons, you and I. God will turn his laborers, he will turn his followers into laborers.